you just got the Sony FX30 and once you open it up and looked at those menus, you found out there are a whole lot of menu settings in this thing and you're not quite sure what to use. Well, to help you out, I'm gonna show you what my cinematic settings are on the Sony FX30. And just to be clear, there are no settings in and of themselves that are on this or any other camera that's gonna make your videos look cinematic. More so, it's a combination of a lot of different things like shutter speed, aperture, frame rates, but more importantly, framing and lighting. And I have lots of videos on the channel of all these aspects. So once you figure out how to get through the settings and what you should be using to get the base of that good video, then you can see those other aspects to help you get even better results. So now let's get to the settings. All this is a touch screen, but I'm just gonna use the dials here to get through it so I'm not getting fingerprints all over. The first couple of screens are the My Menu screens where you can set things that you want because there are quite a few options all throughout these menus and that way the things you use the most often you can get to. I'll show you what I have programmed there towards the end. We're gonna start out with the regular menu settings. So first off, we have this and I'll show you quickly what everything's set to. Frame rate, shutter speed, aperture, ISO, picture profiles, color temperature, all those different things there and you can quickly see those things and then also change them if you want so that's a very useful and i'm not going to go in depth on everything here i'm just going to show you the settings i have and if you do have questions post them down in the comments below and i'll try to clarify what i can if there's things that don't make sense and i will explain a little extra on things that i think need more explaining so first up we have file format XAVCS 4K, we have all these different versions of 4K. This is the highest quality one, SI. That's for interframe recording. All these other ones that don't have the I are a group of pictures type of recording, and I have other videos on that as well explaining how that works and what that does to your image quality. But I typically use XAVCS for most of my videos. If I'm doing something more serious, like a short film or something, I'll go with that even higher quality setting. Next up, movie settings. I typically always shoot on 24 frames per second. There's also 30, 60 is what I use for slow motion most of the time. And if you really want, you can go up to 120, but then you also will need certain memory cards in order to be able to capture that. And if you don't have these options here, you need to go find the setting on your camera that says PAL and change it to NTSC. Because when it's on PAL, you only have 50 and 100 as your options. And NTSC is where you have all of these options. And then also you have all of these which are gonna change the quality of your video. I like to use the highest one, 100 megabytes per second, 4 to 2, 10 bit. Some computers don't recognize this, so depending on what you're using, you might wanna use 4 to 8 bit, and it will be easier for your editing process. S and Q, I don't really use that, but if you wanted to, basically you set what your recording in frame rate's gonna be. So if I'm shooting everything 24 frames per second, I do that. And then what you want it to use for the frame rate and recording that it's gonna slow down from 60, 120, or all these different options if you wanna speed up like a time-lapse type of thing from one frame per second up to uh, 24. But I just have it set to 60. And then once again, you can change these. And depending on what you do, it might tell you you need a different card. If the card you have in isn't fast enough, I just have V90 SD cards in here right now. Log shooting, this is a newer setting that my FX3 didn't have until update, but essentially you turn this on, you can pick the type of log shooting you wanna do. If you don't know what that is, basically you're shooting a more washed out image, less saturation, less contrast, less sharpness, so that you start from pretty much a washed out nothing image. When you start editing, it gives you a lot more room for color grading, color correction, and making your shot look the way you want instead of all those things being baked into the recording. And as you get better and better at color grading, that's something you might wanna start looking into to get the most out of your camera. Proxy settings, this basically records a lower quality file along with whatever you're shooting. So say you're doing that 4K, 422, 10-bit video, but that's really hard for your computer to edit. This is gonna also record the same stuff at 720, a much lower rate, so you have six megabytes per second. And what that allows you to do is to edit your proxy files, and then when you're finished, you apply all the editing you did to your higher quality files, and then that way you're not having to wait forever for things to render while you're doing your initial editing. Lens compensation, I just set everything to auto so that it compensates based on what it detects from the lens and what it thinks it needs. Format, that's so you format your memory cards. You wanna make sure you do that whenever you put a new memory card in there so that it's set properly to record to your camera. And uh, these have UHS-2 compatible cards as well as the CF Express Type-A. Record media settings, I just have set to recording 
simultaneously to both cards, whether I'm doing pictures or video. That way I have a backup of all my footage. But if you just wanna have two cards in there that you're filling up separately, you can set to slot one or slot two, depending on how you wanna do it, and then auto switch media. So when one gets filled up, you can do the other one. That can be really useful if say you're filming something that's really long, you have one card in there, once it fills up, it starts recording the rest of the next card. You can actually take out the original card, stick a new one in, so it basically keeps going back and forth as long as you have battery power. Recover image database. If you have an issue with your card, you can try to get stuff back on that. I've had that happen once and it worked, but uh, it's kind of scary when you get that message. Right serial number, I have that set to off. File settings, you can change how you want your files recorded. Right now, mine are just with a C and then whatever number the recording is. Exposure mode, manual, I'm always using manual. I do not use these other ones. That allows you to control the aperture, shutter speed, ISO on your own. And I have multiple videos telling how to do that as well as what settings you'd wanna use depending on situations you're in. So be sure to look on the channel for those. So camera set memory, this is a cool setting because you can basically set up everything you want from your shutter speed, your aperture, ISO, the type of recording, frame rates, bit rates, color temperatures, picture profiles, everything you want. And you have all these different settings you can preset for that. So let's say you're shooting somewhere at a live event, you're doing indoor and outdoors, you go there ahead of time and you set up multiple settings, say maybe regular frame rate for inside, a higher frame rate for inside so you can slow it down later for slow motion, same for outside, and then another one for nighttime when it gets darker outside. So you can go to this recall setting once you set that and pick the one quickly, then everything's set up how you need ahead of time so you're not having to scroll through and change a ton of settings and maybe even miss something. Memory recall, just choose which card it's pulling from when you're looking at your footage. Silent mode is off, release without lens, enable. Anti-flicker set, I haven't used this before. I guess you can vary the shutter if there's flickering lights in the background, but if you see that happening in your footage, you can just change your shutter speed one or two clicks to the right or left, and usually that won't have a huge impact on your motion blur, and it should take care of the flickering. Audio recordings on audio level, it's really just gonna depend on the type of mic you use. Typically, what I'm recording on right now is a Sony mic that goes in the hot shoe and I have it set to auto with the level I want and it works pretty well in most situations. I have live for audio out timing. I like to have the wind noise reduction off. Time codes, this just depends on the type of equipment you're using and if that's applicable to you. And that's not something I deal with with the gear I'm using right now. Steady shot, so you have off, standard, and active. Off and standard will have the same focal length. When you go to active, it gives you even better stabilization, but it does punch in a little bit. I typically leave it on standard, and you can have set to manual, so say you had a lens that wasn't compatible. Or maybe you're using an adapter and you can go in here and set to whatever focal length you're using because if the focal length isn't set right and you're using it in manual, it's gonna look really weird with how it's stabilizing your footage but all my lenses are Sony lenses or a Sigma lens. It's made for Sony, and so auto works just fine. For zoom range, I like to use clear image zoom. I don't do optical zoom, but clear image lets you punch in up to 50% on your image with almost no noticeable loss in image quality, so that can be really useful if you need to get in a little closer to something, but you can't physically move closer to it, and I have it set to the zoom lever up top here, and that works really well. And you can customize the speeds for that, and if you have a remote, Grid line display I have on and rule of thirds grid is what I pretty much always use. You can see the lines here. Rule of thirds is really useful in helping you with framing. I have videos on that to help you learn how to better frame your videos. So check that out if you want to find out more about it. Emphasize record display so that this red box around it so you know for sure you're recording and all these other lights. There's one here, up top here, over here, and down here. So lots of red lights let me know I'm recording because there've been plenty of times I forgot to hit record on old cameras and didn't realize it until I went to hit the button again and it's a bad feeling. Marker display I have off right now, but when I turn that on, I have it set to 235 by one, which is essentially your 21 by nine aspect ratio lines there. So you can frame according to those when you're shooting. And then when you get to editing, you format your footage to that aspect ratio you wanna use, but this helps you with framing during recording. But the only downside is when you put this up, you do lose your rule of thirds grid. So we turn that off, rule of thirds comes back. And there's all kinds of other markers, safety guide frames, things you can set up so you can experiment with that based on what you think you need for your situation. Auto slow shutter is off because I'm shooting in manual, but what that would do, slow down your shutter before it's gonna raise your ISO to try to keep better image quality, 
but again, in shooting manual, that's not an issue. ISO range you can set there. So if you're using auto for your ISO, it wouldn't let it go above whatever you set here. But for me, that's not applicable because I don't use auto. And then all these base ISO, that's if you're using log, you have these. When you have your base ISO, you wanna shoot at that ISO as much as possible because that's gonna give you the best image quality with the least amount of noise. Exposure set, I have set to one third stop. So every click is a third. Metering mode, I typically use spot. I'll put that spot that's in the middle on whatever I wanna base my exposure on. I'm most of the time using that. Sometimes I'll use multi depending on the scene, but almost always spot. Face priority and multi metering, I just have off because if I want to use spot metering, I'll just do that and put it on someone's face. And if I have it on multi, then I want it metering based on just that multi setting and not faces. And you can change where you have the spot for your spot metering. For white balance, I'm almost always using the Kelvin temperatures right here. And if you click over to the right again, you can actually fine tune it even more with coloring. And sometimes I'll use custom white balance if I have more time for whatever scene I'm doing to set up with a white balance card to make sure everything's as good as possible. But you also have all these presets that can be very useful. I just would not go with auto, especially if you're moving around because as light changes, it's gonna change the white balance and that's gonna make coloring your stuff even harder once you get to editing. I just leave that in standard because I don't use auto white balance. Shockless white balance, if you did have auto, that determines how quickly the white balance changes as the lighting and setting changes if you're moving your camera around. But again, I don't use auto. I keep dynamic range optimizer off. I don't want it baking any of that stuff into the video. Creative look is on standard picture profiles. I used to use picture profile eight, but hey, it doesn't exist anymore. So you have all these different options you can choose from. And even when you do choose one, you can go in like picture profile one. I changed the settings to be like what I used to use for picture profile eight. So I have Cine 4. It's pretty easy to color grade. It gives you a little bit better than what the camera does on its own. But now with the log setting, I'm going to experiment more and more with that because that's going to be even better. So picture profiles off for now. You can select the LUTs you want and you can also import LUTs to put over your footage while you're recording. A LUT is called a lookup table so that when you're recording and looking at that washed out image from the log setting, it's a lot easier to set things like white balance, exposure, and it'll help give you an idea of what stuff could look like once you get to the editing process instead of just looking at that washed out image. Zebra display is off right now, but when I have it on, I set it to 95 so that I don't get anything overexposed. I can just click it on real quick and see if there's any hash lines. And I know that whatever is showing hashed is right at the edge of being overexposed. Focus mode, I typically use continuous autofocus and you can change the transition speeds and how quickly it shifts the subject sensitivity. Really, you just have to play around with those depending on the situation you're in to see what you like for your style of shooting. I have autofocus assist off. Focus area, I typically leave on wide. With this, you can change all these different options. I just leave them checked. I really hardly ever take it out of wide. Focus area color is white, does not circulate. Standard, I keep face and eye priority on with human and you can go in here and uncheck things if you want it. You had a person with animals and birds around, make sure it's only going for the human or animal depending on what you're wanting. I just let it choose left or right eye to auto. The face eye frame display, it'll show a little box pop up on the screen. I like to keep it on so that I know what it's focusing on. And you can register faces as well so that it will focus on one person over another. A good example of this is shooting a wedding, say a bride's coming down the aisle, you want it to stay focused on her and not all the jumping around all the faces around her. That's a good situation to use it. Focus map, I don't mess with that. Focus magnifier, you can go in and check your focus on stuff there. I have it to no limit and it punches in to times four. You can do one, but to me, what's the point? I don't want to punch in times one. Peaking display, I have off right now, but when I do have it on, I typically have it set to high and red. You may want to change that depending on your situation. If there's a lot of red in the frame, switch to something else, but red works most of the time. Then all this, I don't really do anything special in any of this stuff here, except right here. I put delete first, so when I want to delete something, I hit the button and then I just delete instead of hitting delete, then having to confirm and hitting more buttons. And in this section, I don't do much here either, but what I do typically set up is I turn Bluetooth off and I turn airplane mode on just so I'm not wasting power. However, something I am going to start testing that I haven't done yet is this USB streaming and see how this works streaming straight from the camera. And I'll have to get back to you guys on how that works. If you have done this with your camera, let me know because I'd be interested to see how well it works. But those are some newer features that I have not used yet. 
Here is that setting I was telling you earlier. If you go here, it's gonna change the PAL and that's gonna give you the 50 and 100 frames per second, but we don't wanna do that. 24 is what we want for the normal cinematic look. You can save settings, save or load settings, custom key, so this is important here. This sets up when you push all your buttons, what they are. So I'm gonna show you what I have set to mine. So for the rear, focus magnifier. A lot of the things on this camera already have words listed, so a lot of them I have just set to those things. So that says focus magnifier, that punches in times four. Marker display right there, that controls the aspect ratio overlay that I was showing earlier, so I can quickly turn it on and off. Steady shot in the middle, so if I wanna go to the active versus the normal steady shot. Zebra display is marked there. Peaking display, also marked on the right. I changed the bottom to audio record level. So if I am using a different microphone, I can hit that, quickly change the volume because I have shutter speed set to the front dial. Record frame rate at the very top. I have record frame rate right there, white balance set to that, and metering mode set to there rather than ISO. And you can see those settings here again. White balance metering mode, focus standard, that's a little textured button up here, and then movie shooting the record button, you know, I don't wanna change that to something else because it says record. And then the record button that's on the front over here, I have an autofocus to manual focus selector because some of my lenses have an autofocus switch, some don't, and so I like to be able to quickly change the manual focus if I want on those lenses that don't have the switch. Focus hold, some lenses have that, I just leave it, but I don't actually ever use it. And then for my dials, the front dial I have set to the shutter speed, the back dial here is aperture, and then this wheel right here, right and left, I use for ISO. And then also the function menu settings, you can have separate settings for picture and video mode. I'm just gonna show what I do for video because I really haven't messed with the pictures because I hardly take pictures. I set up the autofocus transition speed, the subject shift sensitivity for autofocus, the focus area, the zebra level, the picture profile I wanna use, and then the gamma display assist, that's the LUT overlay it shows you so you're not looking at the washed out image. Then I have peaking display level and color, audio record level, steady shot, and then the marker display. So if I hand the camera to someone else, they're not familiar with all my customizations. Most of these are pretty obvious, but then if they hit function, you'll find most of everything else you'd need quickly. And then your display screen, you can show which things are on there as you hit your display button and scroll through. I just leave them all on. Record with shutter, I have off. This custom dial set is just specifically those dials. It's in the same menu though as we looked at earlier. I have the rotation normal, so right is up, left is down. Lock operation parts off so it'll I can change things while recording. Touch operation is on. I have swipe up off. I actually don't even know what that does. That's a newer feature that I haven't seen before, but Touch function shooting, I have touch focus, so that's where you can touch something on the screen and it'll rack focus to whatever you want quickly. You can also use touch tracking, so then whatever you touch, if maybe someone's walking by, it'll stay locked onto that subject until you cancel that. But I typically leave it on touch focus. Screen reader, I'm not familiar with this either. I'm not sure what it is, so I have to do a little more research into that. Let me know down in the comments if you've used that. Monitor brightness, I set to manual and have it on full bright. Display quality, I have set to high, and when you first get your camera, this is set to standard, so if the picture doesn't look that great, come here, set it to high. You'll get better quality. It uses a little more battery, but I want the best looking image there so I know what I'm working with. I leave the flip direction on auto for the monitor. This is set to counter. There's the gamma display assist I have on, and the type is auto, but you can select which ones you want as well. Those are the LUTs that are already in there. And then you can import others if you have certain styles that you like. And when you upload those LUTs, you can come here and display them if you have the log setting on. This is not displayed, auto review is off. I have my power save time set to five minutes. Auto power off temp is set to high, so if you do this, it will let your camera run longer and hotter before shutting itself down. It has a fan in it, so I haven't had any issues with this or the FX3 overheating, but this will let it last longer if you are in a really hot setting. This volume for playback is set to 11, and all these audio signals, this is all gonna depend on the type of microphones you're using and the setup you have, so I'm not really gonna cover that. USB connection, again, depends on what you're using it for. I have it to select when connects, so when I hook something up, it'll ask me what I wanna use it for. HDMI, this as well, if you're using a monitor, it's gonna depend on what you're using the settings for that monitor. And then record lamp, I have all on, so all those lights I showed you earlier, when I hit recording, it'll turn them all on. You can have only the front on or all off, like maybe you're in a dark setting and you don't want any red glow. 
that could be an issue, but most of the time all on is useful for me. So I know that I am recording. Fan control I have often recording because I don't want the fan making a bunch of noise. I'm not typically in a really hot environment, but if I was outside in the summer really hot, I'd probably turn it to minimum unless I'm far away from the subject and the audio is not an issue, then I'll just turn it on auto. Sensor cleaning, something I don't typically mess with, nor pixel mapping. You can check the version update as needed. And that is all the settings overall. The last thing are those custom menus that I showed before. And what I have set to mine is the first page, format, then I have the file format of 4K, 1080p, depending on what you want, frame rates, picture profiles, gamma display assist, zebra settings. Second menu is all the autofocus stuff, shift sensitivity, transition speed, the peaking settings. And then I set number three to these camera memories so I can quickly set new memory settings if I need that and then recall them once I set them. Interval shooting for things like time lapses, then record media settings if I do want to take it off as simultaneous recording. And then those touch autofocus options so I can go in here and change it from that focus to tracking if I need and also change the fan control and the recording lamps if I want to turn those off. And those are all of my settings on the Sony FX30. I hope that was helpful. If it was, hit the like button and let me know down below if you have any questions about any of the settings I went over because I know I went through them fast, but the idea is just to let you see what I did. You can hit pause, go back through and get a better look. But if there's something you don't understand, I'll try to help you out in the comments below. And again, remember, the settings in and of themselves don't make your video cinematic. There are lots of factors that play into that. And I have a lot of videos on the channel with examples from movies, as well as lots of examples I made to help explain these different aspects, whether that's framing, lighting, picture profiles, bit rates, all that type of stuff to help you out. So be sure to check the channel out for that. And I'll see you guys in the next one.